So we learn price discrimination, okay, in the sense that um, the producer or the monopoly, what do they want to do? Okay, they want to grab this amount of consumer surplus for themselves. Okay, and how do they grab it? Okay, they grab it by trying to uncover the consumer's willingness to pay and charge them the price. Okay, they are, they are willing to pay. Okay, so in order to extract as much CS from the buyer, the monopoly will have to offer each and every consumer a separate price based on the consumer's willing to pay. Okay, and this cannot be achieved through a single price monopoly that we have seen earlier on. Okay, so in this case, we will be going on to the three kinds of price discrimination. Okay, so I will guide you through slowly, don't worry. A lot of students have problem with this, um, this, this concept, so um, I do understand. Okay, um, it's not an easy topic to cover in school. Okay, um, I'll try to relate it with more examples and hopefully you will get some sense out of that. Okay, the first kind of PD, it is known as your first degree or your perfect price discrimination. Okay, the word perfect simply means that the consumer is going to uncover each and every willingness to pay off the consumer and charge each consumer a different price. Alright, so in this case, um, it is going to price discriminate perfectly. Okay, so whatever consumer that is going to buy from this monopoly, the monopoly somehow knows that, hey, you're going to pay 1000 hey, you're going to pay 800 okay, and they're going to charge a different price. Okay, so in this case, it's the practice of charging the, the consumer or the customer the, the maximizing price that he or she is willing to pay for each unit bought. Okay, and this one, this, this Y, the new MR curve is equal to the demand curve. I will I will relate it with the new diagram um, with a new diagram in the next diagram. Okay, so let's consider this um scenario, um where you are selling iPhone six. Okay, by the time of casting this video, okay, uh, iPhone seven may be out already. I don't know. Okay, but um let's consider that uh, this commodity iPhone six Apple is the one that is um the producer. Okay, so we know that um. Your demand curve, it is downward sloping. But now, your marginal revenue is equal to your demand curve. Okay, and why is this so? Okay, remember earlier on, when we have a single price monopoly, okay, your marginal revenue, it is lower than your demand curve. This one we have derived before in the previous lecture under monopoly. Previous lecture, monopoly. So if you don't know why, please go back and watch monopoly. Okay, I've explained this before. But now, we want to explain why your marginal revenue is equal to your demand curve. So let's consider this scenario. Okay, um, let's say um, there is this this consumer, Mr. Jeffrey. Okay, Mr. Jeffrey walks into the iPhone shop and these are Apple 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 um, service store or Apple service um, service um, consultant actually said things that hey, Mr. Teal can pay one thousand. Okay, so in this case, they are going to charge me $1,000 for the first sale of iPhone. Okay, I'm going to pay $1,000, Mr. Teo. Okay, I don't know why people seem to think that I'm rich. Okay, but uh, <laughs> but anyway, that's besides the point. Okay, but now let's consider the second cons consumer walking into the, um, walking into the Apple store. Okay, and this Apple service consultant, okay, um, he or she realized that um, this, this, this buyer, okay, is going to, Let's say it's going to be willing to pay nine hundred dollars only. All right. So instead of um lowering price for what he has sold to me, okay, and to sell nine hundred dollars for two iPhones, now this one is actually sold to me. Okay, I want you to pay attention to this. Okay. And the next phone. Is going to be sold to um, the next consumer at nine hundred dollars. This is the revenue that is going to be created. Okay, so in this case, you realize that the consumer, so the producer, they do not, they are not required to lower the um, revenue 
um, or the price for the first room from one thousand to nine hundred because they are able to charge me at one thousand dollars and they are going to charge the second consumer at nine hundred dollars. They are not required to reduce the first first iPhone sold to me um, by one hundred dollars. Okay, so this is the main difference between a single price monopoly, okay, and your um and your and your perfectly priced discrimination. And since your demand curve illustrates to you the willingness to pay and the marginal revenue that's um that's um that's imposed by the that's charged by the 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 producer, okay, it is equals to the willingness to pay. Okay, this is where your MR is equals to your demand curve. Okay, there is no need to reduce your marginal revenue to lower your price to sell more phone anymore. Okay, or your phones can be charged to different consumers based on their different willingness to pay. Okay, so the third consumer, okay, let me use this. Okay, let's say he has a willingness to pay of eight hundred dollars. Okay, and this will be the third revenue that um the the um producer is going to produce. Okay, they is going to collect from from the from the from the consumer as um, revenue okay so you may be wondering okay since you collect revenue 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 okay what happens to all this okay all these are technically still your consumer surplus okay remember that okay but when we are able to perfectly price discriminate to that certain extent uh, okay in the sense that we are able to uncover we are able to uncover all the single bits of consumers willingness to buy Okay, in theory, we are able to have various price level to meet each and every one's demand. Okay, all the way to such an extent that you are going to capture all the consumer surplus, each and every of that as a producer. Okay, so Apple is actually quite greedy down here. Okay, they are able to charge each and every consumer a different price. Okay, and they are able to perfectly um divide their phone into even decimal places. You realize that earlier on, okay, um you know, it is actually in one, two, three, four. Okay, but in theory, okay, we are able to divide the phone, okay, 1.5, 2.5. There is still someone going to pay for that. Okay, and we are able to capture all the consumer surplus. Okay, so in this case, you realize that the shaded area down here, okay, this triangle. Is the consumer surplus. Alright. And this rectangle here, it is your profit level. Okay, why is it your profit level? Okay, so same thing, this this is your marginal revenue, this is your marginal cost, this is your profit maximizing point. Okay, and at your profit maximizing point, okay, you got to find out the gap, okay, between your AC and AR. Okay, this is also equals to your average revenue. Okay, and this will be your profit level. Okay, and this amount of consumer surplus, sorry, let me repeat. Okay, this amount of consumer surplus will be captured by producers. 